What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back again with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And we've got a killer guest with us today. We are talking about the modern referral. And Chad Durfee is here. Uh, he is a, a mutual friend uh, we have in common. Uh, that hasn't actually hasn't been on the show yet, but uh, some of the people that you have seen on the show have been introductions from this particular gentleman, Stephen, uh, who is here in San Diego with us, as well as Chad. And so uh, we have some uh, some mutual connections in common, and we're going to talk all about how referrals have uh, not necessarily changed, but the research about why referrals happen and how to make more of them happen has gotten a lot sharper and clearer over the last, let's say, five or 10 years. And so Chad has some amazing information uh, to share, but also actionable strategies and tactics that you can start implementing in your business right away to get more referrals. We'll talk about how to do that. So we'll bring him in in a second. First of all, the junior grandmaster himself, Greg McDaniel, in the co-pilot seat, where you so belong, way over there in your box. What's up today? I'm never leaving my box, Matt. I'm never leaving my box because you don't want to hang out with me outside of my box. So that hurts that's my true. feelings. And so that's why I'm going to stay in my box. Um, all jokes aside, man, it's a beautiful, wonderful, incredible Friday. Gene, our beautiful bald, not blonde, bald ninja, uh, <laughs> a, a blonde bald ninja, uh, was, on, was on a set of a uh, TV show lately. And uh, what did they have to do to you, Gene, to tone you down? They had to powder my, my head. What do you think? <laughs> And listen, I want to just make a case here. I, I'm not comfortable talking about Greg's box, at least to start this. <laughs> exactly. All right? That's enough. That's enough. Leave this my is an open show. I identify with my box, okay? It's okay. We can tell the world I identify with my box. Anyway, not dude. his head yet? Yeah, no, no, he is. He totally is. Chad, dude, he, I'm really excited to talk with you. And, you know, you've been awesome off the air. I cannot wait to see what you're going to bring on the air with us today. So thank you for joining us. I know the last, when we had you scheduled last time, uh, you woke up and you're kind of feeling like a big do pile of dog poo-poo. But uh, you're back on track and you're feeling better? Is, is that me you're talking about? Uh, you're the only <laughs> chat so. on the show, yes. Yeah, Craig, that is not, not remotely <laughs> the same person, but yeah. I was oh, going to say, I don't, I don't think that was me, but, but no. good try. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm an equal opportunist when it comes to, like, completely screwing up. So congratulations. <laughs> I, I, that's all, right. all me. <laughs> so, Chad, fill us in a little bit just uh, on what you've been up to and what you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. So I've actually been in the creation of Referral Consulting, Inc., which is a company that's lead generation specific to organic referrals. And it, it's okay. more the psychology behind what what causes somebody to refer you, right? Um, mm -hmm. Understanding that and then using it to your advantage. Very cool. And your your background is in kind of the mortgage side of things. So you've been dealing with both a mortgage and, but also like building really good relationships with real estate agents. So you've been in, kind of had one foot in both worlds for a while. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my background for the last 15 years has been in sales, right? I've only been in real estate mortgage for about four years. Um, mm -hmm. And in that four years, had a really, really good run using a lot of these systems and strategies. Uh, so now kind of transitioning into a position where I can teach it more and uh, be a resource for a lot of other people who could really use it. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some fun stuff to get into. I've got some questions uh, here on referrals that we'll pull from. And then I know that uh, Gene always comes prepared and locked and loaded with a uh, some type of a tech hint or, or something like that. I would prefer if he came uh, locked and loaded with just an insult. Uh, to Greg every time. I think that he needs to hit back <laughs> for for the ball jokes. But um, let's start off with this. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm, I'm, and this is a total softball, Greg. I'm just going to set you up on this one, and then we can all laugh oh, at this. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'm not even going to give the last name of the person who asked this question. Let's just say Valerie wants to know. Matt Johnson hey, wants to know what? Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, so Valerie wants to know, says, referral wants me to show them a house before talking to a lender. The quote I don't want to go through the process if I don't like this one house. So let's let's all give us our best shot on on objection handlers for uh, for that. Greg, what say you? No. That's that's literally it. No. You, you if you don't get pre-approved, then no, I'm not going to show you the house because I don't want to waste your time. And because the reason why I say that is I don't want to show you a home that might be just a smidgen out of that comfort zone when it comes to affordability, both on purchase and on monthly price and, and mortgage cost. So let's get it, let's get pre-approved, make sure that we're in the ball, ball game that we wanna play in, and then let's go look at properties that fit that criteria. Do you understand where I'm coming from with that? That's my, that's my response. That's my yeah. rebuttal. Yeah, everybody, everybody agree with that? Anybody have any contrary views? Because otherwise I have another follow-up question to that. Gene? <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah, no, I just, I heard somebody say something interesting before, like, 
the first hour of consulting is free. After that, I charge. So in other words, I'll, I'll take a ride with you to this one place. I mean, maybe not mm. if you're not approved, but I'll take you, I'll take a ride with you for this one well, this one event. But if mm. you know, regardless of what happens when you call me for a second one, we we got to get that you know that approved, that pre-approved, yeah. whatever. Okay, I, I can see that maybe for a, a newer agent, that, that can be a potentially good strategy. No. Um. Okay. Yeah, I, I know, Greg. You feel very strongly about that. <laughs> no, that's a horrible yeah. fucking idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why waste your time? God. I mean, seriously. It's like, okay, sir, I'm I'm new and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Sure, man, oh, waste man. my time. That's cool. All right. Well, well I, also, I have a, it, yeah. if you don't mind that I jump in here, it gives you an opportunity Please. to establish your control in the relationship right off the bat, right? You're you're a professional yeah. and they're not. So you get to yeah. be the professional. Very true. By the way, Chad, I really like your background. I like the, yeah, I right. like the I just, bridge. I just finished my walk. I'm in Boston right now, or New that's York, a, or wherever this IKEA background is from. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's New York, but I'm just. Hey. Right, let's, let's say that. <laughs> I didn't have it on the on the sticker in the store. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, Chad, I think one of the things that I've noticed, uh, it's very tempting, like as business people, that like this is a it, the question itself is funny about how to how to handle the objection, but it does bring up a bigger issue, which is sometimes we treat referrals differently in terms of how we take them on as clients. And I think that's one of the big traps of just any, especially solo service provider, if we have to both do the sales and we have to deliver the service, there's a big trap there where we can tend to fall into the trap of treating referrals as if they were different and we tend to skip steps with them. And I'm sure you've seen this because it's, it's the side effect, it's one of the side effects of you being good at what you do is you're gonna teach people how to generate more referrals and guess what's the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna help them skip steps and mis and mishandle them as soon as they start generating referrals, right? It's true. It's true. And I think it's just important to understand that you should have the same process every single time, regardless of where the client came from, right? Because the process is what's going to be able to generate the referral in the long run. And if you don't take control in the beginning, like Greg was saying, um, that process mm -hmm. is going to go awry really quickly. Yeah. Take Agreed. notes, Matt. This is, this, is why, this is why I chime in, because I'm right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, blind, blind squirrel and all that. I get it. I get oh, it. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Chad, there's one more question I want to throw to you. This is from uh, Peter. This is from the same place, the Lead Gen Scription Objections uh, Facebook group. It says, what do you do to extract referral business out of past clients? So if you were to help a real estate agent just kind of starting from scratch, you don't want to worry about what their ongoing process is right this second. Um, what are some of the low hanging fruit? What, what are some of the ways that they could just go back to their past clients and generate referrals? Yeah, low, low hanging fruit. I mean, there's all different types of things that you can do in this. Um, engagement is really the key on this. A lot of people will, will set up their past clients on like a drip campaign or they'll send out emails or different things. Um, and it's important to realize that satisfied clients don't refer, engaged clients refer. So you've got to give your clients, your past clients, some type of buy-in into what you're doing. So something that I do often is I'll like redo my value proposition. And I'll send it out to all my past clients and say, hey, guys, I could really use your help on this. I've just redone my value prop. Uh, please take a quick look at it and see if there is maybe any other area that I provided value to that's not on this list. Right. And immediately okay. I'll start to get some engagement out of some of those clients that want to jump in there and, and chime in. Or, you know, and they'll say, you know, this you did this for me. That's not on the list. This is really helpful. And it starts a conversation in, in, a, in a spot where they're they're having some buy in into what you're doing. Right. So you're engaging them at that point. Uh, and then from there, I'll start to, you know, proceed to referral conversations. But it's never, it's never, like, I never come in and just, like, slap them with a hard request, right? So that, that if, if maybe this isn't the spot to do it, but, like, one of the biggest mistakes that realtors and salespeople in general make is they make the referral about them, right? So they'll go out to their audience or to their, their post clients, you know, past clients, and, and ask for those referrals, and they'll have things like, hey, the greatest compliment you can give me is a referral, or who do you know, or, you know, thank you for helping me grow, or please help me grow, and clients don't want to hear that, right? They're never going to yeah. refer you. Um, yeah. So you got to find a way to flip the script, make it about them, and give them an opportunity to serve their sphere of influence, right? Well, so, and, how, and throughout your, so how would you flip say, the script? How would you flip the script? I'm, I'm curious about this. Yeah, yeah. So um, you have to teach them why it's in their benefit to help their friends and family, right? So throughout the entire process, and this is why a process is so important in referral, by the way, because I don't just drop stuff on my past clients that I've never, like, that I've never talked to them about. So as they go through the transaction with me, they're understanding my mission statement, they're understand the understanding the value that I provide, and I'm teaching them how to pitch me to their friends and family 
but I'm doing it in a way that, hey, guess what? The people you know, people out there, they're looking for this service or they will eventually look for the service and they're going to find it somewhere and probably from, from somebody who doesn't care about them like I do or about them like I care about you, right? So that's not exactly what I'm saying to them per se, but, but you're giving them the idea that, listen, you're going to be doing a service to these people by providing an introduction to me because I'm going to basically love on them more than anybody else they're going to run into. Right, so you're trying to you're trying to overcome any objections right off the bat that they might have to referring you, uh, and one of the biggest objections is you know you're gonna you're gonna bug them they're gonna have a bad experience they're gonna not like me because I gave I gave their name out, and so um, and, and we should get into this here in a little bit because that question is kind of a I've got to go into what motivates somebody to refer before I go into like how to get your 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 post clients to start referring you. Yeah, yeah, it totally makes sense. But, cool. But give them but find a way to engage them. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that's that to me, that's a low hanging fruit is you immediately start from the perspective of it's, it's about them and not me. And that solves a lot of things. I want to, can I piggyback on that? I want to add something to it. Um, Please. so I, th I think one of the things that, you know, you need to do in order to get that engagement is to stay top of mind. Right. So for me, I, especially in real estate, I feel like, I feel like more referrals are generated because a friend of mine needs a service that I might not think about all the time, but if I'm thinking about you because you're there providing value to me, you might be the first person that comes to my to my thought process. So in other words, after after my client is satisfied and I get everything out of them that I need and that I want and vice versa, I stay in front of them and provide them crazy value over the next year, over the next 20, you know, 24 months, that type of thing, so that when somebody calls them four months in and they go, hey, listen, I got to, you know, we got to downsize, I have to move. Do you know anybody? Well, they just watched a video of mine telling them how to, that rates are low and it's time to get into a new HELOC. I got four guys for them. They're thinking, all right, this guy gave me some great information, helped me cut my monthly mortgage down by 10%. I'm going to refer out to him. So I think being top of mind all the time when somebody needs the service that you provide is important as well. Yeah. hundred percent agree. Agreed. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's pull back a little bit. So Chad, how did you kind of get started on the journey? What, what interested you about referrals and what caused you to kind of dive deep into the subject to begin with? Yeah. So my, my background is in consumer psychology. That's what I, what I got my degree in. Right. So I've, I've been in that. My dad's a psychologist. So there's always been a little bit of that in there and having been in the sales industry for so long, I've kind of understood it. Um, so it's always kind of been a part of what I've done and I've just tested and, and honed it over the years, you know, as I've gone, which is, which has helped me be really successful in every industry that I've been in. Right. So, you know, when I got into the mortgage industry within a year, I was doing over 10 deals a month, just, just by way of, of referrals, right. And, and doing it very strategically and putting a process in place. You know, two years ago, we moved out here to San Diego. My wife and I started completely over. And then within six months, had ourselves not knowing anybody, had ourselves right back up to where we were prior, um, just just by by you know understanding what causes people to refer. Um, and and let me put it this way: not everybody is going to refer you. So the trick here is to is to identify the potential referral centers, right? The potential people who are going to turn into your what you would call your raving fans. You know, the people who are really going to be out there singing your praises, and really focus hard on those people. You know, and build that up. Gotcha. Love it. Well, let's, let's talk about the uh, the process a little bit. So, so take me through. Well, for example, take me through just you dropping into a new market. What were some of the first things that you did, and um, and let's extract some kind of tactical lessons from that first before we dive dive into the like the psychology part. Yeah. So I mean, first of all, I had to get clients, right? So so this is where I'm not opposed to necessarily any type of lead generation. Because whatever you have to do to get clients in the door, go out there and grind and do it. You know, but where, where it really took off for me is when I get a client in the door, I can usually average two or three more out of that client on average. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's okay. where it really expanded. So I spent the first six months just going out and hitting open houses and talking to realtors, talking to, you know, everybody I could, talking to other mortgage professionals, anything I could get to start to get some clients coming my way knowing that once I started getting them in the door with my process, I could, I could multiply them. And so that's where it really took off for me. And I think it, a lot of people spend two, three, five, ten 10 years grinding to get those clients in the door and trying all different types of tactics. And, and you know, most salespeople in general are poor, 
And, and when I say poor, it's passing over opportunities repeatedly. Every client in the door should be two or three more. Mm, that's really good. Yeah. Passing you know, so over biggest... opportunities repeatedly. Mm. It's, uh, Caleb Maddox, 14 year old genius. If you, that's, that's where I got that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that seriously the, uh, the, uh, the yeah. kid that's on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, that's Caleb. Making, yeah, yeah. making cool calls? Okay, cool. Yep. Um, so, right, can I I'll... ask a question real quick? Can I jump in real sure. quick? Well, I want to chat a question. So he said something that was really interesting to me a second ago, identifying your raving fans. Yeah. So I, explain to me your process there. Tell me, get, get, uh, give me a little bit of your psyche, right? I want to know what, the, what does that look like? And it doesn't have to be the whole process, maybe just a couple items that, that set you off to say like, oh, this is somebody I got to reach out to. So how do, how do you identify some of your ra raving fans? Well, it, it happens pretty, pretty quickly, to be honest. So let me preface it with this. Most of my referrals come before I even start a transaction. So like when I write a pre-approval letter, that's probably where 90% of my referrals come from. And then the rest come from those, those same people. And that's where I start to identify, right? Because you have what you would call maybe a soft request for referrals. It's more suggestive, almost subliminal. And that can start before you even talk to a client. You know, when they go to your website, if they see your mission statement there and you have some wording in there that, that you know, tips them off, to the fact that you work by referral. If they look at reviews on your Google or Yelp and you're commenting back to those people, you know, and, and you have any type of suggestive wording in there with regard to referrals, you're already starting to plant almost a subliminal seed to these people. And then on my first meeting with people, I'll actually go through and, and explain to them how I take in introductions, right? I'll explain that I work by introductions. Most of those people were referred to me, so we celebrate the fact that they referred to me and, and you know, I remind them of how the process has been to that point, you know, and then I'll go through the process of what it actually looks like when they introduce somebody to me in the future, how that's going to happen. So I'm overcoming objections. We're talking about it. I'm never really coming out and asking for referrals until I either provide a pre-approval letter or, and, and I'm coming from the lending side, right? You can do this as a real estate agent as well. And you can find your, you know, you'll have a sales cycle that's natural for you, whether it's, it's your courtship period. So everything you do before that client actually signs on with you, What's your onboarding experience looks like? Look like what does your actual experience look like for the client as you're going through the transaction? You know, and you can really find it, like find the points where you can weave in how and when to ask for referrals, right? So, but for me in the lending side, when I would write a pre-approval letter at that point, that's when I would sit down and have a brainstorming session with the client as well, because it's such a high point. It's such a point of ether. They're excited. There's so much emotion in that mo most of the time. And, and just, you know, I'll ask them questions about, have they referred people in the past? Um, what has that experience been like for you? Um, is there anybody that you, that you can think of right now that is also, you know, looking to purchase a house within the next year? And just by their answers to those questions, you know, a lot of times without even asking, they'll just start throwing names out, right? And we'll start brainstorming how to introduce me. Uh, so you'll find out really quickly if somebody's likely to refer you or if they already have referred you. And then those are the ones that you really want to focus on um, you know, your, your process is going to be the same throughout with every client, whether they refer you or not, but the ones that are referring you, a lot of times salespeople tend to like put those on autopilot and say, great, you know, like they like me, I, I'm going to focus on these ones that maybe I haven't given me a referral yet. When in reality, mm -hmm. what you should be doing is doubling and tripling your, your resources around this person that's already shown that they can and will refer you. Gotcha. Perfect. You know, and, and, and the big thing here is like, they've done studies. Uh, in fact, Pew recently did a study like a few years ago. They took 10 different business, 10 different companies, and they focused on three client types. They focused on like a dissatisfied kind of disgruntled client type, right? The one that's going to give you the crappy review. The more lukewarm or like satisfied, they'll give you a review, but they haven't referred anybody. And then like that little 10% of like what you would call your raving fans, right? Um, and they found that by focusing their efforts on this disgruntled group, they could actually win clients back and they could get referrals they actually ended up netting about 15 million over, you know, all the companies over that time period. When they went to the middle group, it ended up being 35 million. And on this little 10% group, it ended up being a 72 million net increase wow. just by, so it's, it's, it's the 80, 20 principle. Right. right. And so most people are focusing 80% of their time on the, you know, satisfying a client or just pleasing a client when you should be focusing 80% of your time on this, you know, this 10, 20% group that already loves you. Let's just beef that up. Mm -hmm. wow. Really interesting. 80 20 okay, always wins, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, it does. In this yeah. case, it's well, crazy. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about the, the benefits here um, because th there's a lot of people in the audience that probably watch Greg's, you know, cold calling show and, and things like that. And, and maybe they're already hardcore cold call prospectors or there are, 
they're running ads, they're, they're working with Zillow, they're getting online leads in some form or another. Um, and they might have looked at working by referral as a slower burn way to grow or, hey, that's how part-timers do it. Like, you, you know, in order to build like a full-time business, you have to get out there and be aggressive in prospecting. And, and to a certain extent, I think they're right. Um, but I don't think there's any reason to look down on getting referrals uh, as, a, as a, like a legit method of growing business. I mean, just a quick example, uh, Jeff Cohn's team, which will sell uh, 800 this year, probably on track to do 1,000 over the next couple of years, 1,000 deals a year. At some point, they'll hit either the next year or the year after. Uh, about 60% of their business comes from repeat and referral. And Jeff is known for online lead gen, like they have a lead gen machine, but still 60% of their business comes from repeat and referral. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that part of it. What What is it like to work with people that start off right away by getting introduced to you rather than coming to you cold? Well, I think we've all we've all experienced that, right? There, there is a level of trust that's already there that isn't necessarily there when you're dealing with cold leads, right? There's a level of uh, authority. There's also a level of obligation on the part of the client whose friend or family member or somebody else referred them. How many real estate agents have been working hard and providing a lot of value for a client come to find out they found somebody else in their, in their family, their brother had an agent that helped them and they got referred to him and you lost them because of that referral, even though that agent may suck and not yeah. provide the same value. But since the brother referred them, they feel this, this sense of obligation to the person, you know, to the referral source. So your closing yeah. ratios on those are going to be so much higher and, and so much less work um, than, than say a cold lead where you've got to start from square one and somehow build the trust. They're shopping you. They're potentially talking to other people. Um, you don't really have an edge when you don't have the referral, right? The referral is what gives you the edge. It doesn't land the deal for you, but it gives you an, an, an almost an unfair advantage. Well, I like that unfair advantage. Okay, so um, Greg, any uh, you've been awfully quiet over there. What's going on? No, oh, me? No, I'm, I, I, I know I'm weirding you out if I don't talk, and I like yes. to do that. I like to, I like to make you feel weird and make you squirm. Yes, it's like uh, it's like being a in a cabin in the woods. Like you you need to hear the birds chirping outside, or something's wrong. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just actually kind of taking in actually what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking notes of what Chad's talking about. And <clears throat> the reason why I'm being quiet, I'm pulling a, a, a bald ninja, is I'm contemplating about a lot of this because, I mean, what's been going on in my career a lot is the fact that, like, I've been I've been taught from day one, as we all know, uh, how to do hardcore prospecting. And when Chad talked about moving from one city to another – and within a matter of months, being able to be right back where he was back when he knew everybody, I started jotting down, you know, a bunch of, well, you guys can't see this, um, a bunch of theoretical ideas about referrals, like what's the genesis behind a referral? And so I'm just listening. Um, and the number one thing that I, I, I come to is, is trust. Um, and then something Chad said is the engaging with them. Uh, I think it's critical to what you're talking about, what we're talking about here. Um, bringing crazy value is another one that I really got a lot out of. And then like what Gene said, same top of mind. So if if people who are listening to this right now can can just kind of wrap their, their brains around the fact of get people that trust you, bring massive crazy value, stay top of mind, um, and and, you know, just be you but be you to your tribe, your referrals will flow in. And in Chad, I mean, obviously we've never met before this, um, but I want to get to know a little bit below the surface. I mean, how yeah. could you go from zero to hero within months in a new city where nobody knows you? What was, what is that, aha, what's that, what's that magic unicorn of well, trust so and value? Yeah, uh, so let me start with this, um, and these are probably be two that you're going to want to jot down here. There's only two reasons psychologically, psychologically that people are going to refer you, mm -hmm. and they're not what people think. The first one is social capital. I was going to say right, so. devastatingly good looks, but okay, social capital, gotcha. <laughs> right, it was, it was, it's so good looks on there for, the, for, for fun. But yes, yeah, social capital, right? Um, what is social capital? It's, it's status. This is something that's subconscious for people. They, they, a lot of times they don't even realize that they're doing this, but if they can refer you to somebody in their sphere 
and that person has an amazing experience, then it ups their value, not only to that person, but within their tribe. So they get some social capital out of it. So, you know, we're social animals. We're mm -hmm. tribal, right? We have spheres and, and status is whether we like to say it or admit it or not, that's, that's in our genome, right? And so we're constantly trying to up our status within our tribe. So social capital is one of the biggest ways to do that. Referring somebody that you know is going to do a phenomenal job for somebody else because they did it for you is going to up your status within your tribe. So that's the very first reason. And that's, that's the biggest reason why you stop making it about you and you get creative and you find ways to make it about them, right? So like I'll teach my clients that, listen, when you, re when you introduce me to so-and-so, they're going to love you for having provided them this opportunity. And then when, and when that person gets introduced to me and I write the pre-approval letter, I actually have that client write a thank you letter to the referral source while they're sitting there with me. Hmm. Just, to, just to positively reinforce to that client that they had a, a huge amount of value in that person's life, right? So now their friend is writing them a thank you letter for, for having referred them to me. Do you think that person's maybe going to refer somebody else now, right? <laughs> yes. Um, right? And, and, and then – and then I'll go, I'll, I'll go a step further and I do family trees, right? So if their friend who they referred refers somebody else, then that's a way for me to get back to the original referral source and thank them because now I'm saying, listen, you have indirectly now helped two people get pre you know, prepared to buy houses, right? Yeah. So, now, so every opportunity I have to positively reinforce the fact that they're, that they're having some value on their sphere, that they're upping that capital, that's, that's where you create those raving fans and that's where you create referral centers. You know, so when we talk about the question in the very beginning, how do I reach out to my past clients and get them to refer me? Well, listen, that process started from day one. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I just start brand new. Like everybody likes to think that referrals are kind of like a do-it-yourself process and you just ask more. And, and yes, you will get more referrals if you ask more, um, but it will be accidental and in inconsistent, right? So that's where, where this process that I'm teaching is so important because you, it's, it, it really is a process and, it, and it's a, it's, it's you have to condition somebody to refer you. And then once they start referring you, you get to condition them to refer you more. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second reason people refer is what's called cognitive dissonance or in other mm. words, buyer's remorse. Okay. So when you think about that TV, you, you save all your money, you're excited. You've done all the hours of research to go out and buy this brand new Samsung or whatever the TV is. You go drop the money, you bring it home, you've got it all set up. And within 24 to 48 hours, that, that, buyer's remorse starts to study. You're like, did I make the right decision? Is this the right TV? Um, is it as good as I thought? Is there something better? So what's the best way to validate your decision? You invite all your friends over for the game that weekend and tell them how amazing your TV is. And when they agree with you, not only does it validate your decision, it also you know, makes you feel important and ups your social capital. So the same thing happens with referrals. When somebody signs on the dotted line to use you as an agent and you're in contract, Within 24 to 48 hours, they're going to be having some, some thoughts. Did I pay too much on, am I paying too much on commission if you're the listing agent? Am I with the right person? Um, that's why the onboarding experience is so important, right? So when they go into contract, I would usually have you send like, um, like a con congratulations packet to them or just anything you can to get them through that 24 to 48 hour period where they're feeling that buyer's remorse. And that's also where I'll do some of my, like maybe like a second hard request for referrals, right? And I'll say, hey, by the way, tell your friends and family what just happened. Let them know you're in contract. If they have questions or concerns, send them to me. Anybody else that you know is looking. You know, so that's another opportunity for you to jump in there and, and try and get referrals because they're naturally in a, in a state where they're not even knowing it, but wanting to tell people what they're doing to validate their decision to have done it. Uh, that's that really good. Hmm. So those are the two reasons people are going to, are going to refer you. So well, understanding so that, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, after, please, after you. Yeah. So I was just going to say, understanding that then allows you to build some systems in your process, some checklists. So I actually have checklists in my, what I would call like my courtship period, right? From the time that I make initial contact with a client till the time I'm in contract with them. And I have, very specific points of value that I'm adding that I add every single time, certain things that I do every time that I know other lenders aren't doing or talking about questions that I'm asking them, things that I'm teaching them. And also I have checkpoints at when and how I'm asking for referrals every single time. And whether that's a soft request or that's a, that's a meeting that we're setting up to actually talk specifically about brainstorming, how we can help their sphere. 
So let's go back. I want to go back to what you just talked about here a second ago. Social capital is something that I think is incredibly powerful uh, that we need to be very, not just, you know, not just aware of a little bit, but I mean, I, I think we need to double down on that topic for a hot second. What exactly is social capital? I mean, let's not get down the weeds. Let's go 10,000 feet on this a little bit, but let's just, what does that mean for someone? Yeah, that's a great question. So think about financial capital. What is financial capital? It's, fi it's financial gain, right? You, you've got like, you're, you've got a bank account or an investment with a million dollars in it, you've got some capital, right? So every so social capital is basically the financial equivalent to your sphere of influence, right? So how important am I within my group of friends? Mm. Do they look to me and value my, my opinions? Do, when I talk, do they listen to what I say? When I say, hey, let's go out and do this, let's go to this party, do they come with me, right? So all of these little things that you're doing is basically how, how, how important are you in the lives of the people around you is what social capital ends up being. And the more important you are, the more social capital you have. And that's where you get these huge movers and shakers and influencers. You know, you could have like a Tony Robbins or a Brennan Burchard or some of these guys that are just like huge influencers that have a, 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 an immense amount of social capital. No matter what circle they're in, they're the boss, right? Everybody listens to what they have to say. If they say, hey, go try this restaurant, guess what? You're probably going to try that restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what social capital is. Interesting. Okay, so if you're going to start off, and I, we're going to wrap the show up here in a few minutes, but I want people to obviously reach out to you, Chad, and get deeper on this stuff, and obviously use you for loans if they if they can. But I I I, I want to really wrap people's head around this whole social capital thing because I mean, the reason why I'm, I'm diving deep on this again is the fact that I think it's so important because you verbalize something that's been subconscious in a lot of us, but we've never put a word to it. It's like, why do I want to refer Gene as a as a marketer? Well, because he's the baldest of the bald, um, he likes really okay. bad football teams, uh, and he's a good good friend of mine. He's I can't. Where is it? Where's the rebuttal? No rebuttal. Super Bowl champion? That's terrible. I get it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, seriously. I mean, I refer Gene. And this is no joke. I refer Gene all the time for doing what he does because <clears throat> it subconsciously makes me feel good to refer him. And Matt, Matt for social media, Matt for uh, for podcasting, Gene for, for marketing. And the reason why is because when I pass their name on, I feel good. I feel I have like an, an I have like a, a, a drug hit in my brain. I got I got, I got pleased by going, oh, I did good. I could pass on something positive to somebody else. You know, I brought value. Yeah, and exactly. And that's what we were talking about, right? I mean, like you that's want it. to have that's that hit, that drug hit. Absolutely, and you're giving value to your sphere. And right. now, now your, your, your sphere looks at you like, hey, you know, Greg, Greg knows people. He's, next time we need something, let's go see Greg. And then it gives you an opportunity to provide more value hmm. to your sphere, right, which then just continues to increase that social capital. So when you can understand what's going on at the subconscious level, then you can, from a strategic standpoint, turn it into something that NC referrals, right? Hmm. It's actually, I know we don't have enough time on this, um, on this show, and We've gotten a little bit deep on some more psychological <laughs> psychological stuff, but to do it is actually not that difficult, right? To actually put it into play and implement it is really not that difficult. It's it's honestly it's a bunch of little things that you just structure in in the right places, and then that process will be with you forever. You can use it whether you're in real estate, whether you're selling cars, no matter what you're doing, you can implement it anywhere, and it's going to work. And you're yes. going to double and triple your business pretty quickly. Yes, Paul Franklin. Of course, I have social media capital over Matt Johnson. That goes without saying. Um, but, I mean, I'll tell you one thing. I think that if people were just to take – let's do like three or five just hard-hitting fast tips before we close it out on how to create social capital. Let's say here's a scenario. You, just like you, you moved to San Diego. You and your wife moved there. You have no idea, you know, who lives where. How did you start? How did you, how did you build let's, that capital right off the right? Why don't we do one each? If you if you want three or four, let's just do one each from cool. each of us. Okay, fine. You want? Yeah. How about that? Um, Dream killer. Fine. Whatever. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I would I would say there there's actually seven ways to do it, but oh, um, yeah, yeah. one of if I'm gonna do if I'm gonna do one, I would say uh, let's say social proof, right? So 
I built out my social media. So I would talk with Gene about this in a way that look, makes me look like the expert, right? Mm. I look like an authority because, because guess what? When somebody's referred to you, they're going to go check out everything about you before they ever, ever pick up the phone to talk with you. They're going to look at your Facebook. They're going to look at your website. They're going to look at your reviews. They're going to make sure that they trust you enough to answer that call or call you back. And a lot of times people are going to call and call and call and you never get a hold of somebody. And it might just be that they're not interest, but, interested, but it might also be that they couldn't find you online or what they mm. did find didn't give them enough trust to, to feel comfortable working with you. So they went and found somebody else on their own. So that was, so, you know, social proof would be one thing that I would say would be something really easy that you could do. Um, if you had the right people working with you to, to really make you, when somebody goes to your website or goes to your Facebook, they immediately feel a level of trust with you. They can identify and they feel like you're, you know what you're doing. Hmm. Okay. Funny, Gene, how about you? Parachute into a new city. You want to build social capital. So the the objective is not just to sell homes. The objective is to build social capital. Well, I, I, Chad nailed it. I mean, he really. So I got to go a different direction, right? And I'm going to actually take take it offline. I would say do some, you know, um, meetups and get re into Rockstar Connect and do some of these things where, especially if you have a big personality, because like he said, if you go into the room and command attention or in, in a good way, and you mm -hmm. are the boss. That'll translate to your social capital as well. So they, they kind of work hand in hand, right? So outside of like mailers and newsletters and press releases and advertising on the radio that you've, you're now in San Diego, I think it's it's important to get out there and actually meet the people, meet the community, walk the, walk the streets, you know, that type of stuff, kiss the babies. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, right I'll, think I'll think politician, him. right? I'll think politician. the last one, but yeah. Uh, we, we get it. We get it. Um, the, we'll let the babies go on kiss. Um, so for yeah. me – I, I love the Rockstar Connect idea. I would not have immediately thought of that, but Gene, you brought it back back to memory. That's probably, if I was landing in a new city, that is exactly what I would do. Um, I would supplement that, and here's my one thing, would be extremely strategic, high-level, well-researched reach outs on LinkedIn. I'd get, I'd get LinkedIn Snails Navigator, which is the premium version, uh, and I would go after every financial advisor, CPA, like probate attorney, like I'd go straight after the people that have deals that are closing now or could potentially refer me deals that are closing now, and i start to go after them, and then I would use that once I had enough relationships with them, whatever it was, 15, 20, whatever, that I have mutual friends with just about any high-level person in town, then I'd jump up the level up above them and just go straight to who are the most influential people in the city, the movers and shakers, uh, and start reaching out to them. And the goal is just get a 15-minute quick connect call. That'd be the goal. So that'd, that'd be my, my one thing. Hmm. Greg? <clears throat> I, mean, I, I mean, probably a little bit out of the box on this. Um, I guess what I would do is I would double down on social media and I would try to become the stickiest person in, in, in the city, AKA um, I would want to be the person that everyone has to come to for any piece of knowledge. So I would do go to patch.com and I would become like the news reporter of whatever news comes over the patch.com email, report that onto social media, go interview and talk with local businesses um, and talk about local specials. You can go to Groupon and you can find local specials and deals and start getting out there and meeting these local businesses and bringing value to them. Um, I would also uh, probably, like here in the Bay Area, we have a thing called SF Fun and Cheap <clears throat> and it's a website we you know all the all the fun and cheap things that are going to happen this weekend, today, whatever else, and be a beacon of information. Um, you want to be the person that no matter where you go, what you're doing, you're like, oh, I should totally call Greg. Oh, I should totally call Matt, call Chad, call Gene. This person knows everything. Therefore, when it becomes like, oh, I'm thinking about selling, who should I talk to? I'm going to call Matt. You know, that's probably where I would start. And the reason why I say that, and again, all you guys that are listening to this right now or watching, you've heard the word Rockstar Connect. Uh, Rockstar Connect is a, is a group that we endorse because uh, they throw uh, networking events for you. Uh, all you do, do is use my name, Greg McDaniel, go tell them you've heard about it from, you know, our, our podcast here. Um, and they can get you going in your local city. They'll throw a party for you once a month, get a free free place, free food, 
you know, oh, by the way, I got to recall them and set up my next two meetings. I'm glad you guys brought that up, by the way. No okay. joke. <laughs> but hey, that's you, what I was You just upped your social capital with that, too. I did. I did. I did. I did. So somebody uses them and likes them. That's oh, right. that's funny. Okay. All right. So, so Chad, what's the best way doing. for people to, uh, to reach out, connect with you, and, and learn more? Yeah, I'd say just go to my website. It's referralconsulting.com. Really easy. Referralconsulting.com. There are some, uh, word script or some referral word scripts on there, freebies. You can drop in, grab those things. You can go to the contact me, shoot me a quick email, um, uh, or Facebook message me. Cool. Nice. Very cool. And Gene, same question for you. Sorry, I couldn't get uh, the button quick enough. Sorry. GeneVolpe.com. <laughs> GeneVolpe.com. Come on, dude. Right. Do the jingle. Do no, the you jingle. do the jingle. Ever... You I do haven't the heard... jingle. I, it's your jingle. You do. I want you to do it. You suck. I'm not doing your jingle. It's your fucking right. jingle. See, I'm All supposed right. to be the boss in this room. Give me the jingle. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> Chuckling away. Like an evil, evil right. ninja. Uh, so, uh, Greg, why should people reach out and connect with you, and how do they do so? I'm a lovable teddy bear, Matt. I have a heart of beating real flesh, unlike your black coal heart. I am, uh, if we want to talk about uh, you reaching out to me, go to bookmcdaniel.com, as Matt laughs. Um, and let's talk about EXP, guys. Let's talk about bringing value to you. Let's talk about what we can, what Matt and I can help you facilitate where you can grow to uh, when it comes to your business, coaching, training, uh, different products, you know, getting, getting you into the right mindset um, that a lot of us, we all need. So go to bookmcdaniel.com. Let me talk with you and see if it's the right thing for you. Matt, where do people leave us a five-star review? Not a four, a five. That's right. Uh, go to Apple Podcasts. Go to <laughs> iTunes, depending on your device. As Greg said, do not leave a four-star review. It will be summarily de deleted. You heathens review, never know, leave exactly. a four. Five-star five <laughs> reviews only. Thank you very much, and good night. Uh, but uh, specifically, guys, if you if you enjoyed a particular episode, if there was a guest that you particularly enjoyed like Chad today, make sure to give Chad a shout-out in the review and just thank him publicly for his time and his contribution. So, Chad, we appreciate your time. You've been awesome. This was uh, I was I was looking forward to the episode. In fact, I already referenced some of the things that we were going to talk about in earlier episodes just to whet people's appetite. I know Greg was well, like Greg's ears perked up right away. Like, ooh, okay. So, uh, so I know people have been people have been waiting for it. So I know they'll get a ton of value out of it. So we we appreciate the time. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah. Our pleasure. So Matt, Gregory. pick a color. Pick a color, fool. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling green. Money, money green. How about money green for the bow today? <laughs> money, money, money. Chase that money dollar. Green. Make that cheddar. All right. That's right. Anyways. That's my urban version of McDaniel. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the show. We love you. We appreciate you. Chad, you're a legend. Thank you for being here with us. Gene, you're always a welcomed guest on our Ever Friday show. Um, as soon as Matt can remember to put you on the invite list, which I have been beating him up every single show about putting him on the permanent invite list. So I have your back, buddy. I am rooting thanks, for pal. you. Thank hey, you. much love. Anyways, guys, I love you to pieces. Have a beautiful, wonderful, incredible weekend. Until next time, peace out, ninjas. We're gone.